Good morning. Thank you for joining us again for another time of praise and worship. It's a new month of August, which has become known as Women's Month. I would like to focus our attention for this month on women in the Bible that can teach us some wonderful lessons for life and living. Also because gender-based violence has been called the second pandemic running alongside the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. The time of lockdown has caused more women to suffer abuse and injustice over the last six months. I'm trusting that in the next few weeks of ministry, it will help women to find hope and solace through the Word of God and their abusers will be turned from their wicked ways by the love and forgiveness of God's grace. So if you have a Bible with you, our scripture reading is taken from Matthew 15, verse 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that convict vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So the disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. She keeps crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. He said, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And the daughter was healed at that moment. Our key verse for this morning is Matthew 15, 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is yea and amen. That it addresses all situations, even the pain that many women are facing in these days. Our prayer this morning is, Lord, help all of us once again to see you at work in the situations that was not easy even for you to address. But may our hearts and minds be open to let you work in some of our difficult situations. May your word find a lodging place in our hearts so that your Holy Spirit can minister to all of us, especially to our women. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I, we get into the preaching this morning, I, I want us to view a short video, which you may have seen before, but it will help the ladies to start off on a good platform as we launch into the message of today. You are beautiful. You are smart. You are funny. You are kind. You are unique. You are worthy of love and affection. You are never too much. And you are always enough. You are precious. You are a diamond, a rose, a pearl, the most stunning of all God's creation. You are worth more than you could ever imagine. Worth more than the numbers on the scale, or the hair product you use, or the shoes you wear. More than how many girls wish they were you, or how many guys wish they had you. More than the price tags on your clothes, or the percentage at the top of your math test, or even the number of followers you have on Twitter. Your worth surpasses all 
earthly things because in the eyes of the Lord God, you are loved and you are worth dying for. Regardless of who you think you are, whether you model in a magazine or you model pottery with grandma, whether you're on the hot list or the not list, whether you're head cheerleader or a high school dropout, whether you're Miss Popular or you've never had anyone you could call a friend, whether you love yourself and love your life or you can't stand to look in the mirror and you feel as if everything in your life is falling apart, whether you're such a winner or you feel like the world's biggest failure, regardless of who you think you are, the reality is, is that you deserve someone who would give up their life for you because you are powerful and strong and capable. Read about the women in the Bible. Esther, Ruth, Martha, Mary. These women changed the world forever. And inside of you, each and every one of you is a woman with that same power and that same strength and that same world-changing capability. And your responsibility is to find that woman and to set that woman free. This is who you are. And any voices in your mind that try and tell you differently are from the enemy. And the next time you hear them, this is what you say. You say, nah-uh, not me, Satan. I am a daughter of the living God, cherished, loved, and adored above all things by the creator of all things for the glory of him who is greater than all things. I am awesome. And please, don't you forget it. My theme is simply crumbs are enough. The, the heading to this video that we have just watched says, this is what every human should see and hear. It was first screened about seven years ago, and I wanted you to be reminded that this is who you are as a woman of strength. And I salute every one of you today. What powerful words were spoken through these video words that should lift every woman, no matter how you may be feeling, or what you're going through. No matter what is being said about you, you are a woman of worth. Yet I wonder, if this Canaanite side of Phoenician woman saw this video, would she have felt as good as I hope many of you are feeling after watching the clip? Would she have felt good about herself, happy in spite of the situation she was going through? Now here's a very important question. Would this woman have gone to Jesus for help if she knew what Jesus was going to say about her because it was nothing like what the video said about women being special. You see, Jesus, of all people, referred to her as a dog. Now, I know our Lord referred to her in this way for the purpose of the truth that was going to be revealed through her story of faith. But there are many women out there, and maybe even those who are watching the service today, no matter how many beautiful words, beautiful videos, beautiful WhatsApp messages you may receive this month. It won't change how you feel about yourself. The reason being that in today's world, women are, made to, are being made to feel like they are nothing. They're made to feel like they are less than a dog. The verbal abuse, the physical abuse, the heartache, the pain that women have to endure is unbelievable and unbearable. The things that women have to go through are oft times beyond what words can describe. That is why I believe that Women's Month is, imp is so important because it gives us the opportunity to reassure all our women that they are the apple of God's eye and that each lady is very special in God's sight. I don't know if the pandemic with this lockdown restriction has heightened the abuse women has had to face from husbands, boyfriends, even maybe from your own children. But I want every woman to take the words of the song and make it your own in the midst of lockdown, something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, Jesus understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful of my life. I believe that is what drew this Canaanite woman to Jesus. 
She had heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming to the area where she lived. Now the region of Tyre and Sidon was not part of the countryside where you would expect Jesus to go because it was where mostly non-Jewish people lived like Samaritans, Canaanites and this Syrophoenician woman. The Jews had very little time in dealings with the people from this region. Now in all this background of the animosity between the Jews and the Samaritans, this woman was prepared to take a chance and to go where Jesus was ministering. So my first point, she had one problem. Matthew 15, 22 says, A woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried out unto him, saying, My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. This woman had one big problem. Her daughter was grievously vexed with a devil. Now, I don't know what this means. I don't know if it was an emotional or physical problem, how the devil manifested in her daughter's life, but I do know it was so bad that she couldn't keep it in the house anymore. Have you ever had one problem that got so big that you couldn't keep it in a secret anymore? And it got so bad that it got you out of your house. The woman left her comfort zone. She went seeking for Jesus. The woman was radical. She left her home, she left her neighborhood, she left her community. She climbed over cultural and religious barriers to get to Jesus. I don't know how many miles she had to walk to see Jesus, but she wanted to meet this deliverer. This woman's action contradicts how we often teach when it comes to seeking after God. I just wait on the Lord, sister. And the Lord will come through for you. And if the Lord means to bless you, He will give you your heart's desire. We say real faith is proven by how long you can wait, how long you can suffer, and how long you can grit your teeth. Have you ever had one problem that has pushed you into a corner and to the point where you can't bear it anymore? You've prayed about it. You've been waiting on God for some time to, for it to come through. This morning, I have come to tell you, God's waiting for you. He's waiting on you. And if you want something from God, you can sit around and wait for him to come by. Now, I know there are times when the devil whispers in your ear, don't waste your time. This problem is a generational problem. It happened to your grandmother. It happened to your mother. So just accept that it's your turn to bear the scourge of this curse that has been around your family tree for ever so long. You have been walking around carrying this burden because you think it's your lot. And you have just grinned and bared while the problem is killing your family. This woman had enough. She was not going to allow the problem to control her, her child any longer. She was ready to break the curse and not allow this thing to get the better of her and her family anymore. You see, you have, to, you have to get radical enough to step out of your used to zone and say whatever it takes, I want God to deal with my one problem. It brings us to our second point. Matthew chapter 13 verse 22. A woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried out to him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord thou son of David. When she finally got to Jesus, she respectfully cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Her one plea was, I need to have mercy on me first. She was drained. The crisis of a daughter who was being tormented by, an evil, by the evil spirits was now affecting her and she couldn't take it anymore. Have you ever needed mercy for yourself first? Because what you are struggling with, the pain, the sorrow, the heartache, the shame that you as a mother have had to go through because of your kids, the abuses get into you. And it's becoming too hard for you to bear it any longer. You too only have one plea. Lord, have mercy on me. But here comes shock number one. Jesus said nothing 
He answered her not a word. Jesus didn't smile or, or entertain this woman. There was no reaction from him to her one plea. Matthew 15, 23 says, But he answered her not a word. And then his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. Now what do you do when you have a crisis and Jesus says, Not a word. What do you do when your whole body is riddled with pain because of the, or the stress you have to bear? How do you survive the silence when you feel like God is ignoring you? This woman was respectful. She called Jesus by his messianic name, Son of David. She humbled herself because all she asked for was mercy. She was truthful about her daughter being put, messed up by a devil. She was honest and vulnerable. Yet Jesus said not a word. But then comes shock number two. And to make matters worse, the disciples added insult to injury by telling Jesus to send her away. Now, you would have expected that one of them would have had some sympathy for the woman and put in a good word. It just seems as if this was not her day and help was not going to come her way easily. I want to say to you this morning, don't let rejection make you give up on your one plea. Especially when you acknowledge that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And this brings us to our third point. She had one praise. Matthew 20, 15, 25, the King James Version says, Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But here comes shock number three. You see, in Matthew 15, 24, Jesus answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 26, it is not meat to take children's bread and cost it to dogs. Jesus is actually saying that his first responsibility was to come to his own Jewish people first. And she was not of the lost sheep of Israel. It's like Jesus is wrestling with himself. He said it's not right to give children's bread to dogs. He is letting her know that it's not right to give bread which he has prepared for his own children and now try to serve it to her child. That response should have ended the conversation. But this desperate woman wouldn't take notice of this insult. She stopped arguing with Jesus. She stopped trying to reason with Jesus. She just fell down at his feet and she worshipped him. All she had left was one praise. Now, you see, this is the art of real worship. Anyone can worship when things are going well. But you have to be a real worshiper, a true believer, to have all hell break loose in your life and you can still praise the Lord. God is good all the time. Even if He does not answer you immediately, that's true worship. You have to be a real worshiper. And praise God when your child is sick and you've been abused. This woman knew if anything would stop Jesus from doing nothing for her, it would be her one praise. But if you want to stop God in his tracks, you have to stop crying and turn your mourning into dancing with one praise. Don't stop praising him. Give thanks to God in advance. Your praise will make him turn around and do something in response to your praise and worship. It may look bad where you find yourself this morning. But if you are ready to worship like Jesus said to the Samaritan woman in John 4 at the well, I will give you living water if you worship me in spirit and in truth. That is the worship God desires. This brings us now to point number four. She had one position. Matthew 15, 27 says, And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the, of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. You see, this woman did not care what name she was being called. But to call her a dog, wow, 
<laughs> if you must call someone nowadays a dog, I guarantee you that they will sue you for defamation of character. It would be deemed as the height of verbal abuse. But according to the culture, she may have been classed as a dog. But she knew even the dogs ate the crumbs that fell from the master's table. So she puts herself in one position where the Lord had to meet a need. In other words, she is talking about a custom that Jesus was well aware of in the Bible days. The master's dog would position himself under the master's table at dinner time. Some of them would sit on the master's lap. They would be called lap dogs. And they would be in the position waiting for a crumb just to fall their way. The challenge this morning is, have you put yourself in a position to be blessed? Get done with feeling sorry for yourself. Don't let anyone tell you you're, supp you're not supposed to be in the position under the table. You just stay in that one position. You just ha stay hanging around the table until something falls your way. There are enough examples of women in the Bible who were in the right position at the right time to receive the right blessing. The woman who suffered with the issue of blood in Luke chapter 8 came from behind Jesus, lying down on the ground. She pushed through the crowd to touch but the hem of his garment. She couldn't be in a standing position to touch the hem of his garment. From a kneeling position, she may have been able to touch the hem of his garment. But she was lying flat down on her tummy in a position where she needed to crawl. For that was the best and more easiest way to touch the hem of his garment. Other people will overlook you and pass you by, maybe even trod on you. But when God sees your determination and your faith to remain in the right position for him to bless you, everything will fall into place. So we come to the fifth and last point. She had one piece of crumb. Matthew 15, 28 says, Then Jesus answered her and said, O woman, great is your faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You see, when Jesus saw this woman's faith, he had no other alternative but to honor her faith and heal her daughter. That is why Jesus said to his, his disciples two chapters later, when they were wrestling in the process of delivering a boy from being demon-possessed, Matthew 17, 20, he replied, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. All you need this morning is a grain of mustard seed or a crumb of bread. Because in both these small things is everything that makes up the mustard bush and the loaf of bread. <laughs> I was reminded of this truth one, one Saturday morning when I came home from a funeral. My wife and my youngest daughter were busy baking cappuccino muffins. The aroma was so compelling that I asked for a piece of the muffin. Now, I must be honest, the muffins didn't look like normal muffins because they couldn't find the baking tray. So it was rather flat, almost like flat jacks. But my granddaughter was very proud that she could help Granny bake muffins. So she said, Pa, you can only have a small piece. So she broke off a piece just bigger than a crumb. But when I put that small piece in my mouth, that's when I realized what this woman meant. Because that small piece of muffin had everything in it that made up the whole tray of muffins. You see, if you break of a crumb from a big cake and you took it to a laboratory, the scientist could give you the full recipe from viewing the crumb through a microscope. Whatever ingredients are in the cake will be in the one crumb. 
the woman believed that one piece of crumb was more than enough because the Bible says in that hour <laughs> her daughter was made whole as I close may, may, may I give a short testimony of my wife when she went on a coffin bout that lasted for more than a month non-stop it was so bad that I would be awoken during the night from an ov ov from the awful sound of a coffin and it would keep me awake for hours. I can't remember how much we spent on doctors and all the sorts of medicine pills. But one morning after much prayer, the Lord reminded me that we should call her pulmonologist for an appointment. His prescriptions was goggle your throat, steam yourself with a small bottle of old bus oil and Get yourself a packet of prednisone tablets, then come back in 16 days time. On the 16th day, not before, not after, my wife stopped coughing immediately. Like with the Duman, it was not the day before or the day after, but on that very day, what seemed like crumbs from the old bus oil and the 15 rand prednisone tablets was enough to bring about the healing. God's healing of your one problem will happen when your one plea is backed up by your one praise so that you can get into your one position. Then you will receive your one piece of crumb which will be more than enough. And no amount of abuse, no amount of problems, no amount of whatever is bugging you or trying to keep you down, you will survive. When you follow every one of the five steps this lady took to bring about healing to your situation. All you need this morning is a crumb of God's touch upon your life then you will see that one blessing crumb is enough. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are willing to meet us at the point of our need again this morning. Many of us would love to have that crossover blessing. We would want it to be a portion to us because we only want from you what is best for our situation. But this morning, you have shown us once again that if we have the faith of a breadcrumb, we can trust you and believe that you will come through for each one of us and bless us no matter what we're going through. And so we lift up our ladies before you, before your throne of grace and pray, your protection over them. Stop every abusive enemy attack that is planned against them. And in Jesus' name, Give each one of them the strength to reach out to you and praise you in advance for all that you are still going to do in their lives. We thank you, Lord, that it shall be so. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being part of this morning's worship. My prayer is that as we step out into another week that the Lord will stop in Jesus name every force of darkness that would seek to hinder you from living a, a victorious life go in the blessing of the Lord and stand firm ladies and brothers as we trust God to do great and mighty things again in our lives to the praise and glory of his name Amen God bless you have a wonderful week.
Before the earth was formed, you are God. We bow before your throne, oh God, and we just want to give you praise tonight. We just want to give you praise. We cannot make it without you, and we cannot make it without your power. it wasn't of your love and your faithfulness to the cross where would we be today we are able to stand and testify that your death was life unto us your pain was healing unto our bodies that your tears oh Lord they were celebration and joy unto us Oh God that you are in this place tonight and we are able to experience your presence for you are a great God yes you are you are the substance of all human virtues you are all wise and you are all knowing all understanding you can do anything and everything we cannot do. You are everything good that we would like to be. You are omnipotent. You are all powerful. You are omniscient. You are all knowing. You are omnipresence. You are present everywhere. And we know that you are present even in this arena. Oh God, we know that you are in this place and we want to give you praise. All we can say is, Abba Father, thou art worthy to receive honor and glory. We bow before your throne. And we would like to give you praise. Everybody bow down and worship, come on.